Kevin here, top one financial advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller, and we are here to talk about the stock market. I want to answer one of the biggest questions that y'all ask me all the time, and that is, when do I take profits and when do I hold? Or as I put in the thumbnail, hold on, H-O-D-L, hold on for dear life. And if you do sell, how much do you sell? Do you sell the whole thing, half of it? A percentage? How do you do that? So I'm going to break that down. We're going to use a whiteboard and you're going to have to suffer through my terrible handwriting. Um, but as you do that, and before you do that, make sure that you hit the share button now, because again, this is a question that everybody has. I want to make sure that it's, it's clear. Also, this is my view on how to do this. And it's actually a very simple view. So take what you can, add to it if you want to. Um, disagree if you feel like you got to do that. That's fine. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing is, it is super, super simple. And the first question you want to ask is, what is your goal? Because... Your goals should determine your investments, and that's what's going to determine whether you should take profits, when to take profits, how to take profits, or if you shouldn't be doing that at all and you're just holding for the long term. So let's go ahead and pull up the whiteboard. Let's get to it. I'm going to try and do this in 10 minutes um, without stumbling or embarrassing myself with terrible math. All right. So the first thing is, what is your goal? That's the first question. What is the goal? If I do not know the goal, then I cannot tell you or even guide you or point you in the right direction of hold or sell um, and then how to sell if you want to do that. For most people, this is going to fall into two categories. The first category is income. That looks terrible. In. All right. There we go. In income. So it means I am buying stock. I'm selling stock. I'm using that money for something. Maybe I am, you know, saving for a down payment, which I don't know if that's the best idea to use the stock market for. Or maybe it's a vacation. Maybe it's just to, to replace my current income. Maybe I'm, I'm using it as a side hustle. Primarily, again, income. Then in this corner, I have generational wealth. excuse me, wealth and slash retirement. Either or, both, all together, however you want to say that. Um, these are usually the, the two buckets. Now, usually these buckets have different types of accounts. I'm not going to get in that, into that today. But for, in, for example, income is usually your regular brokerage accounts, Robinhood's, Publix, um, Whatever I said, Publix as not like the store, not the store, public with an apostrophe. Yes, anyway. Um, and in this corner, you have um, generational wealth and retirement, it's usually your IRAs, your 401ks, and you can open that at TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, a bunch of other places. All right, so usually, if you're looking for income, you are generally a trader, which makes this corner uh, generally an investor, but that's semantics. All right, so let's go ahead and move down. So when I am looking for income, I'm basically um, selling based on price. And I don't know why my writing is, is landing upward. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm basically selling on price. I'll walk you through an example, a real life example that happened to me today, but also just over the last few weeks. So remember the video that we did maybe a week, two weeks ago? I feel like it was two weeks ago. We talked about banking. I listed off a bunch of stocks that I liked um, that I thought, you know, bank is going to go in the right direction. Things were opening up. The stock market was up at that point in time. So I bought into Goldman Sachs. So that is Stock symbol GS. When I bought Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs today, I'm sorry, when I bought it was $328. Okay, that's what I bought. Okay, great. I bought it at $328. Let me clean this up. And when I looked at it on that date, when I bought in, I looked at it and expected the stock to go to $350. And this was a sell limit. And you can do this on public and a bunch of other apps. 
Now, this is something you always want to do. If you are looking for income and you're coming into this and say, I am a trader, you need to know exactly what are you buying it for and at what point you want to get out. If you don't know that, you're not going to know, obviously, when to get out. But you, you could be holding too long. You say, oh, look, you know, it hit 360 and now it's coming back down. Should I get out? I don't know. I don't know what you thought the price target should have been. Now, how you set a price target is an episode for another day because everybody has their own uh, process that they go through. Um, I have one that I use, and it's just the one that I use. It may or may not be the best one out there, but it's consistent, um, so that's why I use it. All right, so then I also have a stop loss. So at the time that I put in this trade, my stop loss was at 320. Stop loss. So I knew when I bought it for 328, I was either, I only had two real options. I was either going to lose somewhere around $8 per share, or I was going to make about $22 per share. That's that's it. So I know exactly going into it and assume, like, look at all this, all the what ifs are out the way. What if it goes to 300? What should you do? That matter. I would have sold it at 320 anyway. Okay. What if it goes to $500 a share? I don't know when that's going to happen, but I know this, I'm going to make my $22 a share and then I can come back and reevaluate at some other point in time. So I go into it like this. And this is, if you are a trader, you're looking for income, you want to do something similar. Now, what I did in real life is as the stock started to move up, I moved this stop loss up. Now you can decide if you want to do that or not. Some people agree, some people disagree. I'm just telling you what happened in real life. Okay. So Yesterday on Monday, uh, Goldman Sachs was 342. You have 342 dollars a share on its way to 350. So I said to myself, "Well, look, I'm eight dollars away. The market seems fine, which it was on Monday. Things, you know, we were well. It may not have been on Monday, but at one point, <laughs> well, actually, for for Goldman, it was good. Uh, for the market, it was not. So everything was moving in my direction. Things were working. So I said, "Look." Let me just go ahead and move this up, move my stop loss up to $331. It's at $342. So worst case scenario, if something random happens like it did today, then I'm going to lose. It's going to come down and I'm going to make at least $4. It's going to be done in green since I made money. I'm going to make $4 for every share that I have. It is not the three, the $22 I wanted, but you don't, you never go broke taking a profit. So I, I moved it up and lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. So today the market, um, the market was down, but Goldman was down like three and a half percent and lost $11 a share. So it went from 342 all the way down to about 331, which I did not expect, but it happened. So I got out at $4 a share. Now, that's not the worst thing in the world. Maybe Goldman Sachs will go up $11 tomorrow. That's a risk. I don't know that. Um, but I didn't want to you know, let the market fall all the way down to 320 and lose when I could have locked in at least some gain. So I moved it up. I locked in a $4 gain. You know, nothing to write home about, but this 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 is what really happened, right? And again, if I did a trade, you know, every week for $4, per share. I'm, I'm not going to be excited, but I'm also not losing money. Um, so just showing you what, what happens in real life. Other times it hits the price target and we're all good. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes it looks like it's going to go there and then drops to, to a 320 and you lose. Okay. So it, it happens. It's trading. Um, but again, I walked into it. I, I know exactly where I'm getting in, where I'm getting out. And if I move my stop loss like I did, I knew exactly I'm going to make about $4 for every share I have. Or it's going to keep going up. I'm going to get somewhere around at $22. So that's how that one works. So the question is, should I tr should I take profits? Depends. If you're a trader, yes, you should take profits when you hit your target number. You need to have that target number. And how you come up with that, that's really going to be on you. All right. So the next one, how do I know when to hold? Well, if I'm looking for generational wealth, I'm looking for retirement, like I'm you know, investing for my for both of my kids. Uh, one of them owns Lemon. The other one owns Nike. They both own um, index funds. So how do I know like when to sell? So this one is based on time. Okay, let me do this. Okay, so this one is sell based on 
time. If I was really clever, I would draw a clock or an hourglass. Y'all know I can't, uh, I can't draw, I can barely spell. Okay. All right, there we go. This one you want to sell based on time. So your time frame is going to be on you. Y'all know I use the six or 12 month rule for my individual stocks, which means that if I buy Nike in April, I'm going to wait until October and say, Nike, did you do well? The answer is yes. You move on to the next round. Nike, did you not? Did you do well? No. Guess what? You got to go. I'm putting somebody else in the game. Um, so that's how I work with it. But again, that's going to be based on time. I do not generally recommend that it should be less than six months. Why? Because the market, you need to, not everything is going to be microwave. It's not going to be in a week. It's not going to be in five weeks unless you are trading, which in this case, if you're a long-term generational wealth type person, you don't want to do that because if you do that, you could end up just coming back and buying the same stock over and over for a higher price. So if I could have, let's say Goldman Sachs does go to 350 and it just continue, continuously goes this year, next year, Goldman Sachs could be like $550 a share in three years or something, right? And this is this is not analysis, it's just me throwing numbers out there. So if I could have had it at 328, why am I selling it every five or ten dollars? when I could have just bought as much as I could at 328 and just let it ride and get a better tax position and make more money that way with a lot less stress. That depends. If I'm looking for income, I need to do that. If I'm not, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to hold it, and I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I don't know if I said this, but hold all stands for hold on for dear life. All right, so that is number one. I want to base it on time. For some people, it's six months. For some people, it's 12 months. For some people, it is forever. My forever stuff, the stuff that I'm holding on to that I'm not selling, those are index funds. So I'm not selling index funds. Why am I not selling index funds? I know that they do well over time. I know that you can go all back to 1950 and beyond that you're going to be all right more times than you're not. Um, so I don't, you're, you will never see me on public or anywhere else selling out of an index fund. You're not going to see it. There's no point in me doing that. I can sell out of, a, of, out of Nike if it doesn't do well. I will definitely sell out of T-Mobile if it doesn't do right. But the index line, over time, I know it's going to be all right. Uh, I can see in the past that Nike has tends to be okay, but there are no real guarantees there. Um, but I can bet on the strength of the S&P 500. 500 large companies, you're going to be all right. One company, you don't really know. All right. So in retirement though, so let's say I do this, it grows for 20, 30 years, generational wealth, so on and so forth, right? What you tend to do though, is do what's called the 4% rule. Battery's almost about to die. So when, when I do sell, let's say I'm going to do at retirement. So when you're at retirement, I know it really doesn't look like retirement. I'm sorry. <laughs> when you're at retirement, you're going to do what's called the 4% rule. This is a, a rule of thumb that works for most people. And it says that once you hit whatever that number is, you're going to take out 4% per year, which generally the way it's supposed to work is supposed to keep you at $1 million. So let's say I have a million dollars. This is my 401k, my IRA, what have you. And I'm going to sell... That's $40,000 every year. Now, generally, depending on how you're investing, you can make 7%, 5%, anywhere between 5 to 7 because you want to be a little more conservative. So if I'm selling 4% and inflation and things are going up, I'm basically, I got a million, I'm selling 40%, I'm using that to spend, and then maybe I'm actually making 50,000. So my money is draining very, very slowly. If I'm still aggressive, I can make 7%, take out the 4%, inflation is going to be that three, and I stay at a million for what you would hope to be the rest of your life. Um, so that's how most people actually do it. And they take that 4% out of their accounts and they sell little fractions of everything all at the same time. Um, I've had people call me and say, look, I got 20 stocks. You need to sell 40,000. Or let's just say 40 stocks and just make it even. I got 40 stocks, sell $1,000 out of all of them, send me a check. That's how a lot of people do it in real life. It's a lot simpler now with Excel and a bunch of other stuff. But this is what people do. You use a 4% rule once you're in retirement. So to back up, 
I don't know if I hit my 10 minute mark or not. I should have set a timer and I didn't. Uh, there are two ways of doing this. Number one, if you are a trader, you are selling based on price. You come in, you know what price you're going to get out at the low end. You know what price you're going to get out at the high end. That's, that's your answer. If you are a long-term trader or a long-term investor, rather, retirement, generational wealth, you're basing this on time. This could be the time you retire. It could also be a point in the year. For me, it's six months. For some people, it's a year. That's why I come back and decide, am I buying or am I selling? Or am I buying more of something or if I am selling? All right, so that's it. Quick review. You already know what to do. <laughs> um, if you're trading, your goal is income. Your job is to sell based on price. You have to pick those prices. That's totally up to you. You're going to be right sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be wrong. I'm going to just be up front with you. That's what. That's why trading is hard. Um, or if you're a long-term investor, you're doing this for retirement, for generational wealth, you are basing this on time. So maybe it's once a year, you come back, you decide what to buy and what to sell. In either case, especially for a long-term case, you're adding more all the time. If you're trading, you're probably not adding more because you're waiting on a specific price. So you put in what you put in, you get out what you get out, and you just rinse, uh, rinse, wash, repeat. I think that's the phrase. Uh, and you just keep going that way. So that is my answer on when to take profits and when to hold on, which is hold on for dear life. All right, that's it for me. Talk to you guys later.